record. All right, we are recording. Go ahead and go full screen here. And uh, I, I was going to say, like, we got a little docket of things to go over, but I, I wasn't sure if Tyler, um, I guess, uh, got abducted by aliens or, like, what's going on? Yes. I totally got abducted by aliens. I want to start with that just because that sounds like fun. Like, what, all right, so yeah. you, what, 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 what did you post? Like, it, it looked like a glow bug, man. I'm sorry, okay? Like, you saw a glow bug so, at night in the south. Like, get used to it. I thought you What were it was, it. so it was hard to see in the video. You couldn't really see it. Um, come to find out what they think, because I found out about it. My girlfriend sent me the thing that Fox Carolina posted saying, there's been an influx of people saying strange lights in the sky. We're, you know, we're working on trying to figure out what that is. Supposedly, it ended up being, I think, the Starlink satellites that SpaceX launched. Um, but, no, it, it was weird. I was like, I just want to go out and see this because on the off chance that it is, like, UFOs and stuff, I love that stuff. I was like, let, let me go check it out. So I go outside, and I look, and immediately I see, like, this bright light in the sky. I'm like, holy cow, and it's flashing, like, different colors. Like, it was, like, red, green, blue, and yellow, and it was, like, super bright like much brighter than everything else. And I was just like watching it. I was like, this is so weird. So I recorded it, but you couldn't really see the flashing as much. And then yeah, I noticed like, like a glow bug. Yeah. It bug. Looked like a bug. And then that, it was, it was weird. Cause like on, as you're recording it, you could actually see it move a little bit. So that's what, like, that's why I kind of like followed. I was letting it move on its own. And then, you know, it just, it was doing weird things too. It was like kind of, it, it was weird, but apparently it was just those satellites. But yeah, I'm telling you, I, I was I was certain that it was a UFO. <laughs> I was gonna say with the uh, the quarantine, they've got a um, <laughs> what was it like? Okay, everybody made a run on TP at first, and then um, which was the absurd thing, and then which I do have a story about that. Well, not really a story, but I'll come back to that one. Like but, somebody for some toilet paper. Yeah, well, so then you had the meats and you had the foods, and then it was like right now the big uh, run is on hair dye, you know, that's kind of products um, for women. And then it was talking about, well, there's been a reported increase in drinking, drug use, and other things going on. And people were like, well, what do you think was going to happen in quarantine? And I was like, <laughs> and report of seeing visual little lights in the sky come along with all those things too. So, uh, <laughs> I, I just thought well, that was funny. Yeah, the, the drinking, the drug use, all that comes into – making more homeschooling so they're like oh yes so. all right the toilet paper and you guys ever find out the reason why like toilet paper was a big thing i think it's because they just knew that you know you're going to need to stock up and if you're not going to be if you're not going to be going out what's one of the things that you're going to need every day that would be the only thing i can guess okay so but, yeah from my understanding with the actual reason why we had a toilet paper pandemic is what I'll call it, or a mass run on toilet paper is this virus went through not just our country, but worldwide, right? Mm -hmm. And we weren't one of the first ones to get. When it went through Australia, what happened there is Australia is a country that is not producing their own toilet paper. It's an import product. So there, when toilet papers ran out on the shelves and they cut off the supplies from things coming, you know, excess, you know, like cutting of the borders and, yeah. Sure things aren't coming in. That was a problem there. So people were stockpiling toilet paper. So when it happened here, apparently somehow somebody saw things that people were stockpiling in other countries that this was happening to toilet paper was on that list. And then just because of the irrational people that we have here, they just all were like, we need toilet paper. They needed toilet paper. But the problem is our country still produces toilet paper here. Yeah. In house. So yeah. we're not running short on it. We're not having to import it from someplace else. Whereas these other countries like Australia, apparently were having problems getting toilet paper into the country. So they had a legitimate need for stockpiling. We didn't realize that. And we just all jumped on that bandwagon because another country did it. I found that really interesting. And I was like, Oh, there actually was kind of a reasoning behind it. Just Herd mentality. Us, no, but yeah, just a little, uh, you know, that side tidbit of news, like, hey, other countries needed it. They weren't getting it because it wasn't coming in. Uh, our country's still producing it, so we never really needed the, the rush on it. So, I don't know, take it for what it is. There we go. There you go. There's your toilet paper stuff. There's your breaking news. Um, I don't know. What else do we have on that? The other breaking news, and I wasn't sure if anybody else had even posted about it yet, but 
Um, what about the that, Max Exodus from Iowa's? Yes, and that leads into some of this. So Max, Max Exodus from Iowa. So let's talk about that. Um, first, it was first it was um, Mark Perry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perry left first to go to Arizona State as an assistant coach, and yep. then like same day Gilman leaves to go to Penn State. That one was weird. That, yeah. At first, I thought, like, man, what's going on? Like, I didn't think Perry leaving was going to be, like, I just, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I was like, why would Perry leave there? You know, he was from, not, he, well, he's, if anywhere, you figure he'd go back to Oklahoma. But he chose Iowa instead of Oklahoma State. Yeah. That whole family dynamic. So you figured he'd land in one of those two schools. But, um, and I did finally read an article on it. And I think the reason for going to Arizona State, and this made sense, was he was the RTC head coach there, right? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if my remembering is right, Perry's not a decorated international wrestler. All right? So he was leading their RTC program, and because of how the weirdness of the RTCs with the collegiate coach and stuff – He's only allowed limited access to the collegiate athletes by whichever rules. Now, yep. how that goes, he probably has – I'm going to be for real about it. I'm guessing like when he's in a practice room, he probably has as much contact as he wants with him. But if a rep from NCAA comes in, he's not supposed to or something like that. You know I mean? With, without having a legit – without RTCs having a legit like separate gym or a separate room – their practices or people in the room are going to get mixed. I, I I don't really see how you can avoid that. But by rule, I think he was supposed to have limited access to that going. And then, um, but it's kind of like a butterfly effect. Um, oh gosh. Um, Pendleton taking the job at Oregon state left the position open at Arizona state. So now he's an assistant versus an RTC coach. He has direct, you know, step into working with collegiate athletes. And then let's kind of like, I guess like maybe the next step, although he had that step already when he was at Illinois, which I thought he was going to be the next head coach there eventually. But again, it's apparently a stepping stone for him to become a head coach at a program somewhere. Yeah. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uh, talking with the, I mean, tying all this in, I mean, we're going to end up getting into it in a minute was Dennis going up there to take over for Perry. Um, Talking to those guys, yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. The RTCs, at least here in the South, talking to those guys is uh, pretty much they bring guys in. And if it's during season, yeah, they have no contact with them, uh, especially during that time. And any of their practices is scheduled around when the college guys are not there. And it's not until after the season that they really get their hands on them. On the so, guys, like, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, like, with the deal with uh, Gilman, you know, with we all now know Spencer Lee, is going to make that run. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they're in the same weight class or what else going on in that stuff internationally, but, you know, well, there's already been that rift before with Iowa. If it's just one of those, you know, let me jump and get to where I can get my my focus or focus on me. You know, so that was kind of what jumped in my head with Gilman. Uh, and I, I find it interesting, like, the move to Penn State. Penn State is somehow finding ways to recruit – these athletes in there to almost make a superpower RTC team. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, so not bringing in anybody at Taylor's weight, Nichols weight. And also, you know I mean? They're bringing in lightweights and heavyweights in the middle there. Yep. They've got their stack set of guys, but they brought in Snyder and now Gilman. How much are we going to see more of this? Like in, in RTCs and like, is there Tyler and I have talked about it. You know I mean? I would love to see, RTC teams, the Penn State RTC, the the Hard Rock or the, not Hard Rock, Hard Rock is our um, thing over here at, at Hillcrest, but the um, you know the Iowa team, UNC Chapel Hills team. You like how much are we going to start seeing these teams build with these athletes getting better and better? And I would still love to see like a dual freestyle team, like Penn State team versus you know Iowa's team, and then you know, on their way to something. I don't know. I'm just, I'm always thinking about ways to bring exposure to the freestyle Greco programs. And heck, if we're seeing these teams bring in people like, you know, I mean, almost building superpowers. I mean. Yeah, no, I mean, I I totally agree. I I 
it, it's kind of cool. I, I do like the jumps of, you know, people going different places. It kind of adds like a little bit of storyline. It adds some, I mean, cause when Kyle Snyder jumped the Nittany Lions, everyone was like, Whoa, like that, that was such a big deal, especially because of the whole uh, Rudis and scrap life thing. Because, you know, with Penn state, you know, being with uh, mm-hmm. scrap life, it, a lot of people had questions about it, but no, the thing about the Nittany Lions wrestling club is, uh, or the training center is what we've seen from Penn State. It's like, I know me and you've talked about this. As far as, like, senior-level stuff goes, outside of a handful of their guys, they've never really had that strong of a presence in the international. And maybe they're wanting to kind of change that because in, in college, the NCAA, you know, Penn State's one of those top teams, whereas once they get to the international level, I mean, other than, like, David Taylor and, and – I mean, what if you think about it, like you said, I mean, they have all the names – but they don't have the, I guess, what would you say, the credentials? Because, like I said, minus David yeah. Taylor. And that only just recently happened because yeah. Burroughs was always in front of him. Who else yeah. was meddling from Penn State at the international level? I mean, I can't really. The ones that were one. were from the Iowa Hawkeye Wrestling Club. Yeah. The, yeah. You know. Uh, well, there was, um, what's his name? Ohio. He, from, he was for he did Greco, but he was I think he wrestled out of the Nittany Lion Club. He might have I can't remember, but uh, what's his name? Um, they might have had one, the one Greco guy, Rao or Dreadlocks, um, Jenkins, Bubba Jenkins. I think his name was yeah, Bubba Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that that is an interesting component to it, like seeing what do those guys do? Like, it, are they just really wanting to take over at that next level too, as well, or? I, it's not like it's something new. I mean, it, because it's Penn State, it seems new. But, I mean, really, they're not doing anything that Iowa, Oklahoma State, Sunkiss Kids, any of those other programs, uh, Titan Mercury, any of those other programs haven't done in the past. It's just now it's – now because of social media and things like this, it gets more recognition across yeah. the board, across the country where we see it, uh, where it's before it's just local news. Um now, as far as the duels, uh, yeah, I'm on, I think that would be a great thing. But once again, you're talking about private sponsorships. I mean, these things are funded yeah. um, really, really privately. So for, you'd have to have somebody come in and go, all right, I want to put this on. Uh, but you're not going to see the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club go, hey, let's go set up a duel uh, with the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. Um, and I, I understand and, the other thing with this, like, and I know this is along with the private sponsorship, but – this would probably be the reason why most people, we will never see this. And I say never is because of this fact alone. These guys are now not training for their school or just uh, for some yep. training for themselves. And the chance of, and unfortunate it is to say, David Taylor is the prime example. David Taylor went and did the fundraiser for Beat the Streets where they had um, NCAA champ versus a world team member. And the worst thing in the world possibly could happen to that person he took an injury so severely that it put him out of the world championships. And that's what these guys are looking for. And as much as the greedy fan that I am would love to see the freestyle duel between Penn and and Iowa or Oklahoma state and UNC, or just see that freestyle duel or something like that. I think that would be an amazing event to see. That's why I don't think I'll ever see it, especially with now that it's happened now that David Taylor has been hurt, and I'm not saying that he's it's his fault or anything, but I'm just saying that's something that is probably always in the back of everybody's head. These guys are now competing for themselves for, you know, to make a world team, to be a world champion, to be an Olympic gold medalist. And that duel could potentially cause an injury that could happen that, you know, which, which is why freestyle in and of itself is, it's not flawed, but like I, I love freestyle season, but I hate it in the sense that unless you're competing, you know, I mean, at a qualifier or something, they really don't, they go to less events because of risk of injury, I think. And how they're cutting weight, but that's. Well, and, and they also, that's that little bit of extra mat time, that little that you get on your opponent. That's the difference when on in here, you know, you got to be beat once or twice. So you don't want to give them. And we even look when they go internationally, how often do we have more than one, maybe two guys in an international event um, in the same bracket? So yeah. to actually say, hey, let's do a duel here. Um, and even where it is, you know, guys won't go to one uh, way to qualify for a world team. They'll go over to this one. So just so you don't have to see each other, but yeah. that one time. 
Yeah, um, or even like, you know, what, when we had Chimizo ducking, you know, we, we all, everybody in the world and everybody, especially in our country, called it a duck. And that's yep. in essence what it was against Burroughs. But I said it makes sense, though. Every time he's wrestled Burroughs, Burroughs has gotten a step closer and a step better on him. Right. Why am I going to give him one more step to learn one more thing about me when this isn't Worlds or the Olympics, you know? Well, and Burroughs, Burroughs did that with Dake and Taylor. They were training partners until they became opponents. Then he was like, no, sorry. So, yeah. so yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting thing when they – also, if you think about it, um, I know we're kind of leading somewhere, but it's wrestling talk, so I'm cool with it. Like when they go to the RTC in Colorado, you notice they'll bring their own training partners so that, like, Jordan Burroughs won't necessarily always be wrestling with Kyle Dake or – David mm-hmm. Taylor, just because they're at their same weight. Like, Jordan Burroughs, and this is when Mark Hall was um, being recruited, and I thought Mark Hall was going to go to Nebraska because of this, because Jordan Burroughs brought Mark Hall out to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs to be his workout partner. Yeah. So he wouldn't have to work out with David Taylor or, you know, Kyle Dake while they were there, so they wouldn't get those feels or looks, you know. I was like, Dad, go, that's a great recruiting tool. He brought me to Colorado Springs to the Olympic Training Center. And he still went to Penn State. <laughs> I think Nebraska was a distant third to start with, with Minnesota and Penn State with uh, Mark Call anyway. But I, I thought Minnesota, but I, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's because of my fanboy, not like, you know, if Jordan Burroughs had brought me out somewhere for something like that, I'd be like, I'm going to Nebraska. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's like, a, that's like LeBron James asking you to come play a pickup game in L.A. Like, you're not going to say no. Yeah, right. but then again, I was never at his level of talent that knew exactly how good he was that could be like, well, now nah, I still want to go to one of these other schools. That'll be better for me, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, this the difference between all that there. All right, so with all this, the news, uh, I guess, did you see it on social media or did you get the email to you, Nick? Both. I got it on social media late last night, early this morning, uh, and, and then got the email, so uh, – I mean, I'm happy for Dan. Uh, glad I got to spend some time with him this fall and this spring, you know, even even though it was a little bit, beginning to talk to him. And uh, I will say this, and even Dan said it, I, that's going to be an interesting dynamic because what you see on the Dan movie from Flo is Dan. He is so chill, so laid back. Uh, and yeah. he's like Tom and Terry and, and, and Gabe are just so wound up so tight uh, that they brought him in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Dan even said that, like he was drinking a, an energy drink and he was like, they would be like, if I was up there, they're like, why you got to have that? You should want to wrestle no matter what. Uh, he was like, man, it's cool down here. So I know it was a tough move. I know yeah. we got the email saying it was a family decision. Totally understand that. Uh, but uh, yeah, for everybody else that doesn't know, Dan Dennis is, had made the decision to get the call from um, Tom Brands. Tom Brands. You know, Perry leaves the, the RTC and, um, Dan Dennis is a great fit for him. I mean, um, Olympian, he wrestled from Iowa. Um, like I said, I hate it for Chattanooga, him leaving there. Um, Chattanooga's a great place. I think it fit him and his personality. Oh, no doubt. The laid backness, the backwoods country where you can escape and go out into the, you know, to the hills and mountains and rivers and, you know, be – almost like what Dan Dennis, the wild man and disappear for a weekend if you want to, and then come back to it. Not to say that Iowa doesn't have that. I mean, there's a good bit of country up there too, but I think Chattanooga is a great fit for him. I hate to see him go, but yeah, I mean, with the idea of family being up that way, him taking that position makes a world of sense. So, you know. Yeah. As soon as I saw Perry leave, I, I kind of, in the back of my mind, I was kind of feeling like that would happen. I mean, I'm sure everyone did. It was just, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's it's not something that shocked me when, you know, you hear about you that. saw the announcement on it and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, okay. I mean, that's like that's to be expected. I mean. Yeah. So. But I don't, know. I don't know if Dan really jumped right out just because of – not that it was a bad leaving or anything, but, you know, he was happy and Dan being content, like I said, the dynamics. But then you look at it and who's the main guy from Iowa looking to be an Olympic champ? Spencer Lee, who's a pro, who's the guy? All right, Dan Dennis. So, I mean, it, it he does. It checks that all way. the boxes. He was there. It checks the boxes to fit all that. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you just look at and you're like, great for Spencer Lee, great for Iowa, great for the traditional powerhouses. But, like, 
at the same time, just being, you know, I mean, two or three of us being Chattanooga alone, you know, being there, what does it take to keep those guys there to, you know, keep those programs going and keep that draw to get people there, to be that Southern Conference team that's that mid-major team that has been on the brink of, like, we've dominated Southern Conference. Um, Campbell came in with Cole Adams, made the Southern Conference much more uh, competitive with App, us, and – and uh, Campbell, so it's brought a lot of attention to Southern Conference, which made wrestling better there, which I'm all about them growing and being better. I still want to dominate there. But, like, what's it take for us to, like, turn that corner and become one of those teams that can start knocking some, a few people off? I'm not saying be, you know, I mean, as much as I'd love to be a top-five team in the nation, but what's it take for our guys, because you follow Chattanooga as long as I have, like, we can get there. But once we get there, our guys just haven't turned the corner to All-American and knock these guys off. What's it going to take to continue to keep some of those people there? You know, I mean, um, I think Rochelle, Kyle's got the great mindset for it. I think he's doing the right thing with wrestling. Like, we virtually talked to Tyler about it. And, like, we, we virtually wrestled a, t- uh, a Big Ten schedule this year. You know, It's going to a little insight. Expect a little bit more next year. Yeah. So – but that's what I'm saying. What's it going to take to keep some of these guys there? Like, I mean, what – I don't know. I'm just wondering about that. I mean, I think, I think um, you know, wrestling that tougher schedule, give it a few years, and, I mean, you'll, you'll end up seeing a turnaround. It's going to be one of those slow changes. I don't want to say slow, yeah. but it's going to be one of those things you just have to trust the process. I mean, you might, oh. have, you might have those growing pains, but, I mean, I give it about two or three years, and y'all, you'll you'll see more of those Chattanooga guys, and be so. I mean, I've already liked the progress that we've seen from our team, and I've liked oh, yeah. the style that we've seen from oh, our great. guys, and the matches that they've wrestled, and like the grit that they've shown. You know, like that fight for every point mentality, them being yeah. used to wrestle in that Big Ten schedule. So, going to NCAA's, I didn't have them this year. Going to NCAA's isn't like that first time wrestling these big names and those those guys. So yeah, uh, yeah, and the the big thing that unless you have been on campus either it, even in the last couple of years, um, it, it's facilities, and, and that's what talking to Kyle and those guys this year. Uh, I mean, it's it's nice, but then uh, you take some of the top recruits we have right here in the southeast in Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina. I mean, we got some Florida great recruits. Uh, their high school facilities are as good or better than what you have there. Um, and until we get upgraded, which is coming, um, uh, there, that is happening, until all that gets upgraded, it, that's the battle they fight because uh, kind of like Kyle and I said, I mean, or Dennis maybe who were talking then, um, it was like, you know, they go to Campbell and Chattanooga as a city, as an area is fantastic. Whatever you want to do, you got. Campbell uh, in that area is, can't compare to Chattanooga. Yeah. But then they go into the Campbell wrestling room. Well, you go to App State, you go to Boone, same thing. Facilities, yeah. things like Chattanooga, but the facilities is so much better. So it's like, why would I go here, even though the staff is great and all this stuff, but the facilities are about what I have at a high school when I could go over to this. So yeah. until that gets upgraded, um, we're going to get guys that want to go to Chattanooga. Uh, but We're not going to draw the others in. Yeah, the bells and whistles that, I mean, like I said, high school programs now have fantastic things. So. Two things with facilities, and then it looks like Todd might want to say something. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Talk about. Okay. He's saying. He, I know. Maybe. No, I was just agreeing. Yeah. Um, one, I want to go to see Ohio State's new facilities. Like talking about like new facilities, I want to be. I want to walk in that room. That thing. That place sounds fantastic. Like the way the room was built. Like stadium seating's on part of it. Oh my god. One of the specs I saw said something about speakers are underneath the mat. So like when they want to play music, like you can feel by right. Like anything you could think of, like who thought about putting speakers underneath mats? Like you think it just muscle. They like, no, we want to feel the better. I'm like, all right, you do what you want. That just sounds like money, and that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine what it would be like for your opponent. Like you come out to something with like some big bass. Like <laughs> it, it kind of gets you a little scared or something. You would think like, oh man, yeah. like shaking. This place is, this place is shaking. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I agree with what you're saying about the facilities. I, I love Chattanooga. Um, you know, I love that Heath wanted to get everything all together in that one room in McClellan. You know, that's where we wrestle. That's where the practice room and stuff was. Yeah. But my thing with my thing was with that was like it just looked unfinished to me. 
Like, if they could have taken that that entire section where the behind that curtain and lay and designate that, you know, take off that wall where yeah. the cars are and lay that full out, then I think that could have been a wrestling room. You can, yeah, that's why the section in the back over there, that top part where people can have the bikes and overlook on. I think you could you could have made that into what other places are getting without having to like rebuild a whole entire building. I just don't understand why it stopped where it did with that wall. I'll let Tyler jump in, then I'll fill in on the back side of that. No, no, I'm good. You go ahead. I'm. I mean, no, all right. So, so talking to Heath, talking to Kyle a little bit about that. Um, a lot of it came down. The original plan was to knock it out, and I may be kind of messing some of this up, but that was the original plan was to have all of that because they built the new student center, and then it yeah. came down to uh, um, really like you have to have, according to some bylaw or something up there, you had to have so many, so much court space based off number of students, and you would think with what they built, they had enough, but no, yeah. they were actually like one court shy or one court short. Uh, space wise so it got moved and then they found out oh no we actually have to keep that because by some they, bylaw they actually, okay so that's why I looked that way got that and that's why it looks like that, that way but that was the plan and uh, apparently uh, like I said Kyle I, this was this fall he was mentioned they had had some meetings and um, that yeah, I imagine he's wanting bigger and better things as well and that's just you know I don't, I don't you know I'm not trying to like tell you to like tell everything that you talked about but I just say that that's that's a plan for any coach. Bigger and better. You want to play that game with the recruiting and do all that stuff. That's well, amazing. And we know you got Baylor, you got Macaulay, you got Cleveland, all of with those places right high there. And that, high schools and private schools, their facilities are college level. And they, yeah, they walk in. I think he was saying like, there's a big time recruit out of Baylor, and he's like, the guy loves it. Uh, I can't think of his name. He said the guy loves it, but he's been like, coach. I mean, my high school right now is better than this. So. I mean, I mean like, we, 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 went to go. we went to Baylor to get their mats for things when we were there, remember? Like, we yeah. Trucks, so, but, um, and that's how. Yeah, I mean, I, going to Nebraska this summer, I mean, I, I didn't realize what all was out there, but last summer, whenever we set foot in Nebraska's facilities, um, I mean, it's just amazing. But it's like they're the SEC of wrestling. I mean, what yeah. SEC football does, they do for wrestling. And yeah. so we walk, you walk into a Big Ten program, and they're like, this is what we do. This um, is the, yeah, this is the, this is the staple. This is, it is what it is there. Yeah. yeah. Standard. I mean, if you're going to be such a dominant conference, I mean, you can't, I mean, while you think of wrestling, a lot of us kind of have that, we, we all kind of have, some of us, not all, I don't want to say that, but a lot of us do have that connection to like old school kind of grungy gyms and stuff. Like, and we enjoy that. But, I mean, when you get to that level, it's good to kind of pamper your wrestlers. I mean, they, they deserve it. I mean, I the struggle that they go through during the season, the weight cutting, you know, the, you know, the hard practices, it's while that, those grungy gyms and just like kind of small rooms seem nice, it, it, it's, it's good that they get somewhere that they can go and they can, you know, at least train in comfort and be, you know, you know they can be safe with, you know, they have trainers there, all that good stuff. So, yep. I, think, I mean, that, that conference has – I mean, they show that that conference has been – that's the conference in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it works. Yeah. I think uh, finding that balance of the dungeon and that hardcore to the, wow, these facilities are awesome is, like, kind of like the, the ultimate thing. And that's why – and part of it is just because Nick and I wrestled there. Like, I liked the arena. I liked the roundhouse. I liked – our room was called the dungeon. We had two full mats out there. We had a lot of space. It was kind of dark, you know, but it was cool. I, I always think that doing something in the arena, like just pampering that type of area or fixing that would be cool, especially since I noticed that they did wrestle their last duels back in the roundhouse this year. So, yeah, I, and I think and, and Kyle wants to bring some more. I know I was coming in next year. If you didn't know that okay. uh, I was I was coming in and it's going to be at the roundhouse. I'm almost positive. Yeah, um, that's I mean, because it felt when when it was it at. McClellan, like it filled out. So, you know, Tyler, if they're going, we might just be meeting Nick over there for. Oh, there's uh, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, let's do so, it. Yeah. I mean, me and Quasi did want to go see. Um, I forgot what you had that weekend, but me and Quasi were thinking about going up to Chapel Hill when y'all uh, when, when y'all yeah. traveled to Chapel Hill. Yeah, that's so. that's only a few hours away. 
yeah. So and kind of bringing this back with RTC, the other thing about Dan is, because uh, I know you had the qual to go to RTC, it's free because it's all donations and you just have to meet the qualifications. But uh, with the one to Chattanooga, it was 180 miles. If you met that qualification within 180 miles, you could come train. And in the South, having an Olympian as your coach, uh, a good 180 job. miles, it was. I mean, I mean, I got to go up there once with uh, with my son and one of our athletes. Um, but like I said, I mean, you jump in the vehicle on a Sunday, you know, we can, we're two, two and a half hours away. So yeah. that was the other great thing that was, was really good. So I'm like, you come kind of bring this back full circle. I'm, I know, I know Kyle, I know those guys will bring some quality guys in cause he has those connections. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I trust what they're doing. So for sure. Yep. I, I agree. So, um, you know, we kind of started off with Iowa and Nexus and kind of ended up where, I kind of thought we would with um, with Dan Dennis leaving and back to the RTC, which I always liked uh, RTC South too, instead of just calling it the Iowa RTC or Penn State RTC or whichever uh, RTC South. I think they're really trying to encompass that that rule set of that 180 mile. Yep. Like we're in the South, like bring any and everybody here, and we're willing to grow everybody. So I, I, I always yeah, like that. It's in the name. It's in yeah. the name Regional Training Center. I mean, yeah, that's it. It, it, that is very true. So. Um, Let's see. Other wrestle talk. The only other thing that I could think of is Yanni. wrestling stuff. Is I noticed that Yanni has said that he's not going to take an Olympic redshirt next year. Not saying he's not going to try for the Olympics next year, being delayed a year, but that he's decided to not take the Olympic redshirt. Do you think that we see more guys like do what Spencer Lee was doing this year? You know, just go ahead and be like. Look, I can't lose another year. Let's just go ahead and do this. I'm going to wrestle both and, and get after it. Is that going to be the the trend? Like, so we get Iron um, Man, Yanni. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you'll see that much as a trend, honestly, just because of the toll that will take on your body. But I mean, I do think that you'll still see like Spencer Lee's a freak, and so is Yanni. And I think if Yanni were to even still, you know, go for it next year, you're he's he's pretty tough he's a tough guy he could handle it um yeah, again he, same with spencer lee but i don't see i don't see that becoming a norm uh I, I think that'll be more of kind of like a an exception to the rule for those extremely talented people yeah yeah I, I think it's i think it's a handful spencer yanni dayton i think it's gonna be and, it's, and if you notice what we're saying we're not we're talking about the the lighter guys because the middle and upper guys, those are already pretty much set with senior level guys. I mean, you're not going to see yeah. outside of a Gable Stevenson. I, yeah. I can't think of a whole lot more college guys that are ready to, to challenge the, the old guys or the ones that we say old. Cause I mean, they're 24, 25, 26. So the, the I'm like, oh, I don't think they a lot. Yeah. And Dakes and yeah. And Burroughs. Wizards and, and so that, that, yeah. that's true. That's a really good point. So I, I was also just wondering because, you know, i got to make my dig at Tyler and, you know, wonder about his Michigan international team over there, you know, all, all those guys with the, <laughs> there. He's got, got Coon now. Watch out. I mean, we got oh, Coon. Yeah. We also got Mason Paris. I mean, Mason Paris, I feel like give him another year or two. He's, I mean, he's already, God, he's already right. a killer. But he, like, give him another love, year or two. Yeah, him and he's other one with Stevenson. That's going to make – Heavyweight yeah. gonna be interesting. Heavyweight yeah. is gonna be interesting. What do you think about Coon's um, thing where he goes, "Yeah, my training's a little different. Instead of wrestling people, I'm wrestling cows." And pig. I'm like, only Adam Coon can like say this yeah. straight faced. And like, I watched it, the interview with that part of him on there, and everybody else is like, huh? and he just like, and he keeps going. He doesn't come back. He's just like straight faced. Like, yeah. So like now my training is wrestling with cows with social distancing and um, you know, lifting. It's because he's not joking. Actually, he's actually serious. I I'm kidding. That would be great, though. I mean, uh, uh, we're going to have, like, a picture of him suplexing it. <laughs> working on his What's dark for the cow. Yeah. So, all right, cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, da, da, da. We talked about Tyler seeing aliens. We got all our the wrestling talk in. Um, I guess for everybody out there, I was going to say Nick has been posting some more stuff with uh, social media with his high school, uh, posting workouts, find ways to stay motivated. Um, any other things out there for people? Because I know we're in that time period where, you know, people are going stir crazy some. And I don't think this is the time for people to go stir crazy in the sense of like them start doing stupid things to the point where they're seeing aliens. But, you know, 
<laughs> how do we keep on with uh, motivation and like what keeps you going? Like how do you stay motivated to continue to do like the daily at home workout and continue to post things for all the people? Uh, really, it's just it's been a staple of what I do even before this happened. So uh, I mean, if health is a priority to you, then you you work it in your day. So kind of like we said before with the schedule. Uh, with what's going on and all we've done with the next step is uh, this week is just trying to become more interactive and push our guys on. That's why we did the, uh, see him in the background, uh, yeah. but the, uh, with the Facebook live and the zoom stuff, because I mean, it's been a month since we've seen our guys. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was last week when we talked, it was four weeks that Thursday was last time I'd seen any of them. So when um, I've been working with most of them since August. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm in withdrawals as a coach, not just as a teacher, but as a coach. So that was why I started thinking about, all right, what if I start reaching out and uh, other clubs, you see other clubs that you follow on social media, you know, what you're saying that is find people that you like, you follow and just start seeing what they're doing. And um, you're not going to be able to jump right in like those guys are, uh, but you can do something. And uh, like you said last week, if you're not side hustling, getting better and all those things, then, you know, that's just on you. So uh, that, that's kind of what it is. It has to be a priority. Um, we're going right down the road. We've got a state park. So that's actually before this, we were setting up our campsite. We're going to spend, we're going to come to the house during the day, do our lifts, do our schoolwork, and then we're going to be down there. So I'm going to get to get out on the trails. I'm looking forward to that. I miss getting on my trails. So yeah. if your state parks and things like that open, I mean, yeah, I guess kind of come so. back, you know, just make it a priority, you know, throw something around. If it's a cow, a dog, sibling, yeah. just don't hurt them unless mom and dad don't care. Yeah. So. so Yeah, I think Tyler would agree. We've talked about this. Like, you know, the stuff that we talk about is like second nature to us, like, you know, wanting to stay fit, wanting to work out, missing, you know, like Tyler said, the withdrawal of missing the practice room and seeing people mm -hmm. and throwing people and doing that kind of thing is natural for us. But it's kind of interesting, like, to look out and see so many people, like, they're going stir crazy. I'm like, do you not have, like, why don't you have a regular routine? Like, why isn't this part of your thing? Like, for us, this is kind of an anomaly in the sense of, like, you know, Tyler's routine's always been, like, school, gym, and then come to practice, you know? Like, the gym and workouts always been a part of his daily life and routine, you know? So, you know, for him to want to schedule workout time for himself is like, to me, second nature. Wouldn't it be? I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. I so mean, like, I, I, I only asked that question just for, cause I still think there's a mass of people out there that don't know how to do it or whatnot. I mean, Devin just came in over here and I don't know if anybody here, he was asking, are we almost done? Cause he was ready to, he wanted to go get the, uh, the workout in up in the garage. He asked to, start doing some of the training and stuff, you know, like him being going to be a middle schooler next year. Like, you know, uh, I don't make him go work out and train and stuff like that's, you know, still optional to him. But when he says he wants to, I'm going to make sure I make time, get yeah. that workout in and, you know, give him that choice, but let it be his want to do. So, you know, yeah, I mean, I know like during this quarantine, I'm getting to do different, like I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting to like do a lot more reading and, and I'm trying to, and I'm hitting my workouts, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult when you go from like using weights to now having to use your body weight, kind of got to switch things up a bit and makes it a little kind of a learning process, which is fun though. It's, it's been interesting, you know, doing different things and different styles of workouts to try to make it more tough when I have no weights around me or not many weights. Uh, it's been interesting, but, and then it's also given me time to do things that I've wanted to do. I know I'm thinking, um, I was talking with my aunt and uncle and they've been wanting to do it. And now that we have time, we've, we're about to go buy a bunch of like seeds and we're going to go down to the farm and we're going to like start planting some crops for, you know, the summer and all that. Yeah. Just because we've been wanting to do it. I mean, it's not like, you know, we're not tied down by our jobs right now. We don't, you know, yeah, we're not having more time to maintain it and do all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, we get to get, we can go down there <clears throat> we can, we can plant them and uh, go down there, check on them. Occasionally, so I mean, we're, we're yeah. looking at planting some corn, tomatoes, zucchini, stuff like that. Sounds good. And it also helps with eating more organic food too. I mean, trying to see the positive light here. Yeah, like I said, staying positive, getting better. I think those are all the things that we want to keep on preaching. Um, I guess last thing before we head on out though is like, so I also got the. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. <laughs> 
I sent you guys that one meme on him. I was like, that's Wait, normally. Is that the yeah, it's the Bane mask. So I'm not going out in public with this on. So, no. I got another filter I'm going to put underneath it. <laughs> you want to see what it looks like? But uh, You should do the 1990 uh, something Bane from the Batman movie. Like the, the whole thing with the. Yeah, where he's got like the stuff connected to him, all the steroids and whatnot. That'd be kind of funny. So, but yeah, but I think. But it's a fun way to have fun with that. I've been printing these with mask straps and other masks for some of the doctors and stuff. Yeah, and no, I had to print the. Uh, yeah. Is it is. I got to sand that one down to make it actually comfortable and stuff like that. But I got to print it. I'm going to print that shirt. I'm going to. With the other stuff. So. But, you know. All right, guys, I'm going to get ready to hit this workout out. And, uh, Your voice doesn't change, so it doesn't work. <laughs> we'll have to figure that part of it out. So, all right, guys, uh, next Tuesday, about the same time, we'll, we'll get it going. And then, uh, Looking forward to it. Yep. All, right. all right, we'll holler at you guys later. Take it. Yeah, Dad, your voice. <laughs>